Well, good evening, everybody. We're coming to you late in the day this week because, uh, I, I don't know, right now, it, it, it is just like a white, hot, busy time around here. There's so many things that uh, the staff and I are, are uh, trying to get done. So I'm late, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's just gotta be that way. I also don't have much time. I got a couple from St. Louis will be arriving here momentarily, so please allow me to be expeditious. Last week, Mary Coleman and Linda Hughes talked to us about the situation over at school. I think that our opening committee met last night. I have not had a chance to hear how that went. I'll tell you what I'm really hoping for, and that is some uh, uh, tangible guidelines that we can all look to about uh, what needs to happen for our school to reopen. And I'm pretty sure that that's what our opening committee and the school administration is seeking to provide. Again, I have not had a chance to visit with Mary and Linda about it yet, but I'm certainly going to. Um, I gather that there are schools around us that are opening more and more, both public and private. I'm kind of anxious to hear some of the anecdotal um, testimony from them about uh, how they've been able to keep COVID at bay. Remember, we have some rather peculiar things that impact our situation. In some ways, we're a victim of our own success. We have a whole lot of kids and not that much building. And so if we're going to maintain six feet of distance between children, it becomes very difficult to do that and um, correspond to their placement to the uh, wide variety of activities that constitute a school day. But I know if anybody can sort these things out, it's Mary and Linda. So anyway, more on that as soon as I know it. I just want all of you to believe we're all on the same team. We all want the same thing. All of us, we're not at cross purposes. All of us want that school to open up as soon as it can and as safely as we can reasonably make it. All right, um, I think the only other thing I, I must mention this week is to remind you about our mass time survey. I'll tell you, uh, with the bishop's letter and all that I hear from that, I, I, I don't know. Um, there are certainly people that I think are gonna walk away from our church. They do it for a variety of reasons. Some maybe haven't been that close to it anyway. Uh, others certainly have been. Anyway, the bishop's letter is, I think sort of the, the straw that broke the camel's back for some people. But I don't know how many. I don't know, I cannot know. Some folks contact me and we talk about it. Other folks, I'm sure, just walk away, never say anything. But anyhow, I, I, I hope that on the other side of COVID-19, we still have enough of a parish left to uh, be able to, to afford liturgically vital celebrations in our church. Um, I need to say something I think about church involvement is depending upon more than uh, what a bishop might say about voting. I, 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 it, it, it's, our commitment to the church is, or should be, not a mercantile one, but um, uh, like our commitment to our family. And listen, I, I don't want to sound high and mighty here, but I've been around and, and, and I have been on the receiving end of some really lousy stuff that uh, I, 
I, I, I can't even talk about. I just mean to say that um, if anybody's faith in the Catholic Church has been tested, I get that. Boy, do I get it. I'm right there in the boat with you. But our commitment to the church, I hope and pray, will not be too badly diminished by the mistakes and even the outright sins of uh, the people who uh, uh, lead us in the church. Anyway, this mass survey, we're asking you to fill it out because um, uh, we need to know what you want us to do. Saturday at 4 p.m. is certainly going to stay the same. Sundays, we'd like to add one, and we either want to make, make our Sunday morning Masses at 8 o'clock and 10.30 or 8.30 and 11. Now, I got a definite preference between the two, but I won't mention it because I don't want to sway uh, your opinion one way or the other in, in case I might. So uh, please take that survey so we've got plenty of good information upon which to base our decision. And uh, I will look forward to talking with you again next week. Uh, Megan, is there anything else that needs to be added? I might just mention that if you filled out the survey last week on the first day or two and told us that you were able to start serving as a minister again, it was not collecting any kind of identifying information. So if you just said, yes, Sunday morning, altar server, we don't know who you are. So if you didn't put your name in there, you might reach out to Janet Ritter and let us know who you are. We had about seven or eight people who said, yes, they could start ministering, but they didn't give us a name. They just gave us a ministry and a mass preference. We did add an email capture to the survey after that, so beginning midway through Thursday of last week, we did start capturing who was completing the survey. But if you filled it out Wednesday with the video or early on Thursday, we don't know who you are. So thank you if you can let Janet know. Great. Clear as mud. No, it was clearer than that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Oh, man, we really do live in challenging times, don't we? Despite that, we keep loving each other. All right, uh, goodbye for now, and God bless. <laughs>